OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Okay, everybody. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I think actually the very first thing I want to do even before I um, get into the uh, presentation is just sort of ask how many of you uh, were uh, at the first session of uh, or the first of this series a couple of weeks ago um, just by and if you would answer that in the chat. So far, okay. we have two no's, three no's, and one yes. And, and we have <laughs> two Melinda Holtz. Well, yeah, because I answered twice. Responding, yes. Okay, but I know you were here. <laughs> okay, so actually quite a good number of uh, people were not here, and that's okay because... Um, you know, this uh, bill, it bill, even though it builds on some of those ideas, it's uh, the emphasis on some slightly uh, different projects. Okay, so that's good. Uh, and you can, uh, we'll be doing a repeat of the series sometime in um, March or April. So if you did miss the first one, uh, we'll, we'll be doing it, the whole series again uh, anyway. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen and we'll get started with the, uh, the basics of the, the presentation. So this is, um, and uh, I'm not sophisticated enough with Zoom to you know, only share this particular thing at the moment. And so you're gonna see my whole darn desktop. Um, and that's just you know, a little bit easier for me and uh, I hope that it's okay with you. Um, so uh, this is easy projects with uh, Microsoft Office part two uh, and the focus is uh, projects uh, working in PowerPoint uh, and Excel. Uh, my name is Barry Bakin. I am what's called an instructional technology teacher advisor uh, in our adult school, uh, our division of Los Angeles Unified School District which means um, that uh, it's an out of classroom uh, position, even though I'd have about 30 years of in classroom uh, experience uh, as well. And uh, my main, uh, the main task that I'm, you know, that I do is assist teachers with implementing technology uh, into instruction, which also does include uh, online, uh, you know, developing online strategies. And so I've been uh, incredibly uh, busy of late, even though I will say that uh, it has uh, died down a little bit uh, as teachers, uh, you know, have acquired uh, the necessary skills over the last six or seven months, um, you know, for online instruction. I'm also uh, what OTAN calls a subject matter expert. And so I have been doing uh, webinars and face-to-face -face trainings uh, for OTAN for more than uh, 10 years um, since way back. And speaking of OTAN, uh, I'm sure that most of you are aware that OTAN does a, quite a, a bit of things and uh, they're uh, you know, really a, a, a great resource uh, for uh, anybody working in adult education and trying to work with technology. So for today, hopefully the, those of you who have uh, joined us, uh, you'll, after you know, the webinar is over, you'll be able to demonstrate to your uh, ESL, ABE and academic subjects, several separate projects using uh, Microsoft PowerPoint and Excel uh, for the purposes of practicing grammar, vocabulary, or just mastery of content. And while uh, the specific examples are PowerPoint and Excel, for those of you who, you know, use other uh, platforms, you know, like Google Docs or, uh, you know, spreadsheets and things, uh, all of these things are transferable uh, to those platforms um, as well. So uh, before we get started, though, 
Um, I will say, uh, obviously, that uh, most of these ideas uh, did originate in face-to-face uh, -face, uh, environments. And so now we do have the extra uh, complexity of trying to deliver these projects online. And so it's incumbent upon all of us to perhaps uh, adapt what m might have been, you know, go to a computer in a computer lab uh, and, you know, do your project and print it out uh, to a, a new online uh, format. And, and that can take various, uh, various paths. So for example, you, you know, you may be using uh, a particular learning management system. So uh, our district uh, uses Schoology. Uh, others obviously have you know, many, many different options, or some may not be using any uh, at all. So um, you have to think about, you know, what your district uh, is doing. And so, um, you know, first see if these things can be done maybe within the confines of your LMS. So for example, you know, a, a basic uh, profile or a, I'm sorry, a, you know, like a, a paragraph that, you know, formally you may have printed out as a word document uh you know a little some introduction of yourself or of the students you know maybe that now you can do that within your lms as a, a profile picture and a few words or you could do it as a, a discussion um and so uh those things um you know are, are things that each individual teacher uh has to uh, consider for, for themselves. Um, and so, you know, again, w whatever it is that you're using, you know, or if all of your students have access to, um, you know, like a, a Google account, uh, you know, maybe there are features within Google that might make it easier for you to do this project. You know, so, you know, if it's a, if I'm demonstrating it as a, a PowerPoint, then, you know, maybe your students can more easily complete it uh, instead of learning about PowerPoint, maybe learning about Google Slides. So those are just things that everybody um, has to consider uh, on their own. Okay, so the uh, let's move on. And of course, it's not just the projects that you have to think about. Uh, it's also, uh, how are you going to introduce the projects? How are you going to communicate with your uh, students, uh, if you're in a completely uh, online environment, how to do these things. So, you know, is it a matter of, you know, are you using Zoom? Are you using some other type of uh, synchronous uh, platform? Um, are you going to email instructions? You know, do you use Remind? So all of these things are, you know, I can't really touch on because I don't know. Um, the specifics of each of your own teaching situations, but there are things to consider, you know, whether or not you want to uh, s email a packet of instructions or whether or not you want to create little videos on, on how to do these things, or, uh, you know, just depend on uh, live sharing uh, in a Zoom session. So anyway, uh, this is the, uh, the first project uh, I really like. Uh, it's uh, adaptable uh, to many uh, types of situations uh, because we're we're focusing on uh, PowerPoint as opposed to Word. I'm going to show you the uh, PowerPoint or or slide version uh, of this, um, and basically it's uh, I call it speech balloons. Um, very very adaptable to all levels because. Uh, as part of your instructions, you tell your students what it is uh, in addition to their own creativity, uh, you, you can tell them and instruct them, you know what, I want you to include this specific uh, grammar point that we've been studying or some content that you've been addressing or vo special vocabulary. And it doesn't have to be 100%, but you can say, you know, I want you to drop in your presentation one example of using passive voice say, uh, you know, for a higher level class, uh, whereas for a lower level class, it may just be, you know, uh, please include, you know, one example of simple past tense. And so 
uh, very, very adaptable, very flexible. And it, uh, at the same time, it does unleash uh, students' creativity uh, because they can choose uh, the pictures uh, that they're most interested in or that uh, you know, resonate uh, with them. And they can choose uh, the actual uh, text. So uh, let me go ahead and show one uh, student uh, version of this. Uh, now, the, um, there's four slides uh, in this particular conversation. This is sort of like a snapshot of the four slides. Uh, the, this uh, does have student voices uh, in it. Uh, but when they recorded it, uh, the recording volume was very, very low. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to hear it. Uh, but if not, uh, as part of the, the next step where I demonstrate how to actually do it, you'll see uh, how it works. And um, hopefully uh, you'll get the idea uh, that way. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, play it. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear it. I will say that the third slide uh, doesn't have uh, any sound. So that one for sure you're not going to hear. Let's hopefully this will work. Tell you what, let me go up here and we'll just play it from this slide and see. This baby was our dream. I love you and the baby so much there. Let me get rid of this. I wonder if it's my baby. Okay, so um, did everybody uh, get a chance to, uh, uh, were you able to hear that, first of all? It was you, very faint, Barry, but we were able to read the, the captions. Okay. Well, I think at some point I'm going to have to see if I can, because I like, I really like that particular student sample, but I'm going to have to see if I can amp up the, the volume. But the point is what the students are do, doing is uh, recreating a conversation as a PowerPoint uh, slideshow. And uh, they're choosing the, the image uh, and then they're placing in the text. And uh, it's a great way uh, to demonstrate their knowledge or their awareness of um, certain uh, grammar points. Oops. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, get out of that presentation and uh, just going to start a new uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation and, and demonstrate the, the basic steps. So I'm just going to go ahead and start a new blank presentation. Okay, and again, this is all very doable uh, using uh, Google Slides. Um, and so uh, for this particular one, in instead of this uh, layout, uh, and for those of you who have never ever used PowerPoint, uh, basically you have three main areas. Uh, on the left side, uh, you see a list of your slides, uh, the center, uh, is a work area. And then sometimes on the right side, you'll have a another panel where uh, you take care of other uh, activities. Um, you, you, you have a, some choices of different layouts here. Uh, very easy to demonstrate to students. You can start out with a completely blank slate. Um, sometimes you can have things that are pre-formatted. For example, some text would go up here. And then you could uh, insert maybe a picture, uh, a table, you know, other items. Um, so, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with a, a blank uh, slate. Um, so the first skill uh, that you want to make sure students know is how to insert uh, a picture. Uh, there are different ways to do that. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, you can insert directly from a um, you know, from the internet, you can insert from uh, pictures that you may already have on your computer. And again, this may be where if you feel like, you know, with certain levels of students, you have to exercise uh, more control. Um, you could provide, you know, some already vetted uh, images that you know are appropriate or 
uh, that work well with this particular project. So in this particular case, I'm going to uh, insert a picture. Okay, insert a picture. And um, I already have a folder uh, where I have some pictures I set up for the webinar. Okay, so I'm going to pick one that I know will work. Okay, and uh, there it is. And so by just selecting the picture, it automatically uh, places itself uh, in the work area. And then I have to think, well, you know, will people see, you know, the, the speech balloon? So I may want to make this a little bit smaller and put it in the center. Okay. And of course, with uh, these presentations, slides, they tend to uh, be very horizontal. And so, uh, you know, horizontal pictures work a little bit better, even though they don't necessarily have to be. Also, you want to have a variety of, uh, you know, people or, you know, animals if necessary, uh, you know, or other things that you can use as the source of the, of the speech. And so um, a little tip uh, that I like to do is uh, once I have the, um, the picture decided and where I want it um, on the frame, uh, I don't want it to jump around uh, as I progress from slide to slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, back from the uh, home tab, okay, I'm going to make several slides that are exact duplicates. So under new slide, uh, there's an item that says duplicate selected slide. So I've already selected slide number one. And I'm thinking, well, I'll probably have maybe four, four different conversations. So I'm just going to just do that four times. And so I know that uh, the conversation is going to take place over four slides. And as I go through this presentation, um, I know this picture is not going to jump around. Okay. All right. So uh, the next step is to get the words. So um, PowerPoint has uh, a feature that works very well. Uh, insert uh, shapes. And so I'm going to select a shape. And the type of shape I'm going to use uh, is called a call out. And what's nice about these, there's quite a few different little varieties here, uh, but um, they come pre-formatted. And all you do after you select your shape is you can click on the screen and it appears and you can drag it around and enlarge the size. And it's, then it's got this little shape over here the little yellow tab, it's got the, uh, the arrow that sort of points to uh, who is doing the speaking. And uh, what's nice about these is you can type uh, right away. So for example, I might say, start typing, okay, please click on the new card button. Okay, and uh, that represents what this individual is saying. Um, but it does, this is the default. It, every time you start a new one, uh, you may get this default, but you do have uh, different colors, different options. So you can change the, the color fairly easily. Okay, and then uh, you can just by, you know, most programs, you, you can uh, change the size of the text. See, to fill it up the, the screen. And as you do that, you, you can adjust it. Okay. So in any case, it's very, very easy uh, to uh, do that. Oh, but what I, I see that what I did is I, uh, I was working on the fourth slide instead of the first slide, no problem. You can just click the slide and drag it into, into place. Okay, so that is gonna be my, uh, my first slide. 
So uh, before I go on, uh, if you have any questions so far about this one basic uh, process of inserting this, the speech balloon uh, into your slide. And uh, I'm, I'll take a quick look over here at the chat and get a, see if there's anybody who has a, a question. I'm going to do it another few times here anyway, uh, so you'll see it a few repeated times. So uh, if you do have any further questions about that, uh, let me know. So, okay, so now I click on the second slide, okay? And I go back to insert. And again, a shape. Uh, this time uh, I might uh, do a different type of shape. So it's a circle this time. And this time we want uh, this participant in this workshop to be saying something. See, and see, it's, it's quite easy to move these around. And then you type and let's see, uh, is this the correct button to click on? Okay, and again, I'll make it a little bit larger so it's easier to see. Okay. And again, very easy to manipulate the colors or change the colors. Uh, you know, when you click on the on the figure itself, you get your options. Uh, you you know, an infinite number of colors. Uh, you can change the text, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so uh, we'll just do a third one for the the person responding. Uh, again, you know, insert. Uh, you know, notice of course you have some recently used shapes up here, so you you could also make use of those. So this time we want um, her to respond. And she'll say, uh, yes, that's the right one. Okay, and again, I'll select it to make it a little bit larger so it's nice and visible and make sure the, uh, the, the arrow is pointing to her. So now we've got you know, please click on the new card button. Uh, is this the correct button to click on? And she says, yes, that's the right one. And then finally, in the last one, uh, again, insert a shape. This time I'm going to um, insert what we uh, as a convention call a, uh, a thought balloon. Okay, well, let's see, let's pick a different, a slightly different color here. And we'll say, uh, I am so lost. Okay. And this is a nice time or a good opportunity uh, to talk with or to have a discussion with your students about uh, the difference between uh, what people sometimes say and what you know people sometimes think. It may not necessarily uh, be the same thing. You get a lot of great uh, cultural uh ideas here very creative um ideas from from students um you know when when they start to work with this so anyway basically here we have this four slides uh you can click on play the slideshow uh, from the beginning and you just click through it and there you're done with the the textual and the photo but let's talk about the narrations, because that's really where it can be a lot of fun for uh, your students uh, and also good for you. You can uh, get a sense of their pronunciation if you're working with ESL students. OK, um, and also very, very simple. Um, under the slideshow tab, uh, there's a button that says record slideshow. OK, and, and you have some options, but basically uh if you're you know if your students have practiced one of the first options is they will just um speak every slide uh and advance the slides and then powerpoint uh saves all of that so when you click the record slideshow you have two options uh, start recording from beginning or start recording from the current slide well right now i'm on slide number four so what I really want to do is start recording from the beginning. And then 
I just start talking. Okay. Uh, and notice uh, we want to start the recording. Uh, and so uh, hopefully what's going to happen is it's going to start up at the first one. It says, what do you want to record? The slide and animation timings, the narrations, ink and laser pointer. See, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of features, you know, that some people may produce an entire presentation, but we do want to do the slide and animation timings. And we also want to get the sound. So I'm going to say start recording. Please click on the new card button. Is this the correct button to click on? Yes, that's the right one. I am so lost. Now, I forgot to mention that to do the timings, I was clicking on the mouse. Okay, so that it only it would advance when I was ready for it to advance. So hopefully I'm going to try now uh, to play this. Okay. And so uh, we've got play narrations, use the timing, show the controls. I'm, I want it to start from the beginning. Uh, if the webinar gods have been good to me, uh, it will play and you will hear my voice. Please click on the new card button. Is this the correct button to click on? Yes, that's the right one. I am so lost. Okay, so let me get some feedback. Uh, Melinda volunteered that you heard it. And of course, hopefully the volume was, was good because um, I double checked uh, ahead of time to make sure that the microphone uh, volume was fine. So, any questions? Is there anything about what I just did that uh, I should repeat before I go on to editing some of those features? Okay, so I do see there's one question. Estelle asked, do you hold the click button down while recording? No, in this case, no. Um, it's once you click it the first time, the recording automatically stops, uh, sorry, automatically starts. Then when you uh, and it doesn't stop until the end of the complete slideshow. All I did was I did use the mouse to click through when I was finished speaking to click through to the next slide. Now, uh, here's, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I, I did a, a near perfect uh, narration the, the first time through, but it, it may not be the case. And, um, there are some limited uh, editing uh, capabilities uh, that I wanted to um, run through. So for example, let's say, uh, well, let's say that you messed up on uh, the second slide. Is this the correct button to click on? Well, you, you do have, an, you know, the first option is you just tell your students, well, just start all over again. You start recording from the beginning and then you, you run through the whole slide again. The, uh, the whole slideshow again. The uh, other option though, is maybe just fix one slide. Okay, so let's see how would you do that. So let's say slide number two is the one that we want to uh, fix. So I, I select slide number two, under record slideshow, I now have the other options start recording from the current slide. Okay. So I'm going to do that. So what I'll see is I'll see this slide. And again, I'll get everything ready. Start my recording. So I click that once. Is this the correct button to click on? Oh my gosh, what happened? Oh, I have to do the rest of the slide, right? So, oh my gosh. Oh, yes, that's the right one. I am so lost. Oh, so I really messed up there because it didn't tell me that I how to stop for that slide. And that's a, a weird little thing. There isn't a stop recording only for this slide. So what happened is 
it expects you to go from here and then continue all the way through. Okay, and so um, that's a little off putting, but there is a, a fairly easy uh, solution to it. Let me just check to make sure if I do undo, if we got, if it went all the way back to the original recording, let's just play it from the beginning. Please click on the new card button. Is this the correct button to click on? Yes, that's the right one. I am so lost. Okay, so the undo worked. I there all of the four slides are recovered. But let's say again this one is really a problem. And I I, I don't want it, but I don't want to record the other ones after it. So uh, what you do, two steps. Uh, again, under record slideshow, uh, we're going to clear the narration on that slide. Not on all slides, on that slide. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that slide that we wanna fix down to the bottom. Okay, we're gonna trick the recording because it will stop at the end of the slideshow. So now if I record this particular slide again, it will stop at the end of it because it's the last slide. So I'm gonna say start recording from current slide. And then- Barry, before yep. you do that, if um, someone doesn't see the record slide or the record button on their, uh, their Word or their PowerPoint, why would that be? Would it be because it might be on the web app or they're not the updated version or? I would suggest that they um, make an appointment to visit the OTAN office hours and uh, get advice from all of the uh, experts at OTAN because I have no idea. Good idea. Thank you. That's what I would do. But all of those things that you mentioned, you know, maybe things, but I don't know about them. So that's what I would do. I would probably the first thing I would do is I would call Melinda Holt at OTAN or Marjorie Olavides or, you know, Anthony Burek, any of those people. Okay, so anyway, let's now do this. We'll do the start recording. And this time it will end after this slide only. Is this the correct button to click on? And now let's see if that worked. Let's see if we can uh, do it from, we'll listen to it from the current slide. Is this the correct button to click on? Okay, so that's good. And then what do I do? I just drag it back up to the location that I want it. And now when I play from the beginning, it's fine. Please click on the new card button. Is this the correct button to click on? Yes, that's the right one. I am so lost. Okay, so there we go. Um, before I move on, uh, how do you feel about this type of project? Is this something that um, you think your students, uh, you know, may enjoy, may feel like it's a challenge, may like to try any, can I get some comments, some feedback in the chat? Don't be bashful. When is recording there is a pause button on the recording. Can you pause it there? Uh, yeah. And then it just, uh, when it, you, you click it again when you're ready to keep going. So yes, you can pause. Uh, so Beverly says, uh, you make it look so easy. Uh, that's uh, partially a function of um, I've been doing this for a long time, but it's also partially a function of it is easy. Uh, I suggest that if you were not trying this uh, yourself, um, you know, while I was uh, demonstrating that you do it and, and you can see it's really easy. You know, basically you insert the picture, you know, duplicate a few slides, insert the 
text boxes and then uh, the narrations uh, and recording the voice. And uh, recording the voice is a little, you know, does add a certain amount of complexity, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that uh, most levels of ESL students who are working, uh, you know, with a computer or a laptop uh, will be able to do this. Truthfully, I'm, I'm not so sure if your students are, uh, you know, working from phones, uh, if they would, you know, find this as easy to do, but it's certainly something that's uh, available. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go back. I'm going to close this. And we'll go back to uh, the main PowerPoint and, and look at another project. So uh, the next project is really exactly the same as the last project, but more specific, you're specifically, uh, you're asking your students to really practice or demonstrate a vocabulary point or grammar, but all the techniques are the same because basically they're going to create a, a slideshow, okay, with uh, whatever grammar point, you know, multiple examples of whatever grammar point or vocabulary point uh, that you would like them to practice. So uh, in this particular uh, project, the students were working on modals. And so, you know, the idea was just insert a photo, insert text, and, uh, Perhaps you want to, you know, for example, if you can see there where it says um, the modal of ability, when I was young, uh, I could swim. And so, you know, you could introduce some other features of the, uh, you know, change the color of the text or put it in, underline it. Uh, and then, you know, you can tell them, you know, do 10 of them, do all of them, do as many as you can do different modals of ability. So in this case, obviously, they, the student was running through uh, different types of modals. But, you know, it's just a, vari a variation. You know, you can have them type this all out as a Word document, you know, if that's what works in, in your particular setting. But if you want to introduce a little bit of variety and give them some skills uh, in using uh, PowerPoint or Google Slides, uh, you know, this is just another way to um, deliver that project. And it might be a little bit more uh, interesting for them. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to show how to do that because basically all the techniques uh, are exactly the same. So uh, now let's take a look at an Excel project, basically, uh, and that uh, can then be used uh, to uh, incorporated into a, a PowerPoint. So I used to do this with, uh, you know, ESL students, uh, daily activities project. Uh, and basically they learn about Excel, some very uh, basic functions of Excel uh, and how to work with tables. Okay. So um, I want to take a look at an actual uh, student project here. So let me flip over for a moment. Uh, there we go. And we'll just play this slideshow from the beginning. This one doesn't have sound, but it could. And I'll click on the next slide. And they have their, their writing on the last slide. And of course, they could also, you know, divide up this writing selection into multiple slides. Okay. A very, very basic uh, PowerPoint, but the PowerPoint uh, is also uh, dependent on the second slide of the chart. So let me uh, go into Excel and we'll see uh, what that chart looks like. So this is the actual chart that the student created. And again, all of these things uh, you know, work in uh, Google Slides. Um, but basically, all we're talking about are two columns of data. Okay. And uh, w when I start from a blank screen, uh, a blank worksheet, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, hopefully, uh, 
you have some uh, experience with Excel, but if you don't, again, you know, Excel has extreme levels of capability, but they also have very, very basic levels uh, that you can work, that even ESL students can learn to use and, and manipulate. So basically you're looking at two columns of information. The first column is your categories. And then the second column would be the hours you know, how many hours out of 24 hours uh, in a day do they do that activity? So you're asking the student, you know, make a list of the different things you do and then uh, have a list of, uh, you know, how many hours and they should add up to uh, 24. And in this particular case, you could teach, if, if you want to, uh, the formula. Notice that there's a formula here for adding up how many hours. See, and you could just remind them, make sure that you don't have more than uh, 24 hours uh, in a day, okay? It's a very, very simple uh, device and I'll, I'll show it to you uh, when we start with the blank, uh, the, the blank worksheet. And then basically um, you insert a table, it's all done automatically and uh, you, the students really don't have to do too much but they can manipulate the table. Uh, to, in different ways. So I'd like to show you that next. Okay, so let's start from a, a basic worksheet. I already went ahead and I pre-filled in a few activities. Okay, sleeping, working, driving, cooking, eating meals, watching TV, doing homework, and I, I added up some things. And the truth is, uh, I'm not even sure if this is 24 hours. How do you do the auto sum? Uh, it's very basic you just click on the first cell that you want to be added and you highlight all of them with all the numbers okay and then there's a a menu item called automatic sum and so i can see oh look at that i was just doing this in my head i have more hours than the day so maybe here working instead of 10 hours even though it it's let me put eight instead as soon as I click off okay so now I'm not at 23.5 okay so maybe we'll say cooking uh, we can just change that and we'll make it 1.5 I hit the enter key so now I'm at my 24 hours okay um, some you notice I, I this column is a little bit wider uh, the default, you know, they're all the same size. Uh, all you have to do is just move your cursor between the two letters of the column and you can drag it out. And, you know, students can pick up on these things as well. Okay, so that's the first part. All they need to do is put in their list of uh, activities and then their hours. Now they want to uh, move on which is inserting a table. And again, it's all automatic. Uh, you show them the insert button or the insert tab, okay? And it shows them different possible charts. So in this case, you know, you could go, you could show them what it looks like. You know, you hover your mouse over it and you get a column chart, you, you know, all various different charts. This idea seems to work best as a pie chart. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to highlight all of the cells that have titles and move to the right and highlight the, um, the hours, not the total, just the hours. So now that area is highlighted. I'm going to go right over here to the insert a pie chart and they give you some samples and notice as you roll over the sample, you actually get to see the what happens to the sample. So I like this one, the 3D pie chart, and I'm going to select it. Now notice that it automatically inserts the labels for the different colors, um, and you can you know enlarge it if you want, just by dragging on the handles. Okay. Uh, but also uh, notice it's got a title so you can show the students, you know, you just click on the title. 
and they can change the the name. So instead of a chart title, we'll say daily uh, activities. Okay. Um, but you know, it doesn't have the numbers. And so uh, you can do, do that in a, a couple of ways. If you look up at the top, notice there are some options of the design. See, so that's the first option. This one, notice it moved the labels from the uh, bottom to the actual areas, which could be nice. This one, oh, look, it's got the numbers, which, which are automatically converted to a percent. And the, 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 the labels are on the right side. And so that's one way that you could, you know, you could tell students, you know, pick the one you want or pick the one that has the information you need. Okay. That's one way to do it. Okay. Also over on the, the right side, you have some uh, items here. Uh, this one says add or remove change elements. So for example, this one does not have the data labels. See, but if you click on it, it would drop the data labels in there also. So these are very simple commands that you can, um, you know, show your students how to manipulate them. See, now notice, you see, because I checked off the hours when I go back to this one, now it shows the labels and the hours in the same way. See, so it's not really up to you, you whichever method you want to do uh, to, you know, have the, the information uh, displayed. Okay, so here you have it here and here, and you can say, where do you want it to happen? So there's all sorts of little variation. Then the point is, once they've decided, you know, they could either save it like this and turn that in, but you want to get it into your PowerPoint. So basically all you're really doing, clicking on the, uh, the chart and then just copying the chart. Copy the chart, you go to a, a PowerPoint. I'll just use this, uh, the same one. We'll just add a new, uh, a new, a new slide. And then it's just pasting. It, it really doesn't, you know, get much simpler than that for your students. Uh, and so it's a really great activity. They get to learn a little bit about not only the, uh, the functions of PowerPoint, uh, but they're also learning a little bit about Excel uh, and how that works. Any questions on that? Because we're we're getting down to the um, to the end, I think. Right? No. Well, how, we actually have quite a bit of time, right? We yeah. started at one. Yeah. Never mind. I was thinking we started at twelve thirty. I I start my uh, my regular trainings for my own school at twelve thirty, so that was the clock I was on. So we have quite a bit of time. Is there anything about this that you would like me to uh, review or repeat? Uh, and hopefully, some of you are trying this on on your own computers. Gary, we have a request for the repeat that you just offered in the Q&A. OK, and, and we can do that very easily right from the beginning. OK, so I'm just going to say a new worksheet, a new workbook. All right, so we're really starting from scratch here because we do have quite a bit of time. Uh, I'm going to expand that first column. And again, this is the 24 hour, the daily activity. So, um, you know, those, that would be the topics, but it, again, it could be, you, you know, you could be making any type of chart, uh, but let's, let's do this one. So let's see, I do know that sleeping is a, a large part of my day. Okay. Um, computer uh, work. All right. I do like eating. So all you're doing, your students are just typing the categories, okay? All right, um, daydreaming now, big part of my day. Okay, checking Twitter. Do any of you guys check Twitter? See what's happening, you know, in the world? Is that a popular thing or is it just me? Um, they, they call that also doom scrolling. 
Have you heard that term? You just keep looking at Twitter without stopping. Okay, what else do we have? Um, uh, planning for class. Uh, oh, getting dressed. All right, not too much time. Don't need that too much. Anything else? So, give me some other categories of things you're doing. Um, let's see. Uh, sitting. One thing I do a lot: sitting on the porch. Not very much commuting nowadays. I don't really have to do that at all. Um, exercising. Okay, yeah, probably exercising. Okay, so I've, I've got all of my categories. Uh, now I can go ahead uh, and start to put in some numbers. Seven. And, and in fact, you know, the, remember what we said about the auto sum? We can uh, start that right away, even though the numbers aren't there. So I'm going to highlight all of the rows. We have columns and rows in Excel, uh, and then cells. So I'm going to highlight all of the rows in that column and click on Auto Sum. Okay. Oh, you know what I did? I clicked in the wrong place. Let me undo that because we wanted to go down below. There we go. And now we'll do the auto sum. And see now it's in the, you have to highlight past the last row. So that's seven. So let's see computer work quite a bit of that. Let's say uh, eight hours of that. Oh my gosh. Uh, eating not so much, maybe one and a half. Okay, and notice what it's doing. It's, it's giving me a running total. Daydreaming, I've been really good, only a half, only a half an hour of that every day. Checking Twitter, of course, some of these things occur simultaneously, but let's say an hour. Okay, doom scrolling, that's almost the same as checking Twitter. Uh, planning for class, um, I don't really have any classes anymore, but I do work with teachers, so we'll say that's two hours. Getting dressed, okay, uh, we'll give it another half hour, uh, sitting on the porch, okay, uh, give that a good two hours, and then I can say, oh, look, I only need another half hour. Okay, so far with me, everything's good. Okay, we've got the basic data. Again, we want to highlight, select all of the rows, and all of the times, and you just leave it selected. Then you move over a tab to insert, and we have insert a chart. And there's all different types of charts. You can you know see what would happen. Oh, you need at least, so that one wouldn't work, two series of data. How about that? I don't even get that one but that's okay. We're not gonna use it. We're gonna undo it and we're gonna, we'll go ahead and just stick with the, the pie chart because that's the one I know best. Okay, so this is the not 3D version. Okay, I can enlarge it. Okay, I just click right on the chart title to change the chart title. Berries, daily activities. Okay, I can select one of the different formats that are pre formatted. Well, that doesn't look very good, but we don't have to choose that one. Oh, that looks really nice. And notice it automatically created the percentages. Okay, I like that. All right. Um, I do, I think I do want to include the actual hours. So again, we're going to uh, add the legend. Let's see, what do we want? We want the, maybe it's this one here, the values. Uh, look, no, we got to get the names. 
Oh, let's see. We want to get the numbers, the actual numbers. Maybe that's one of the other styles. There we go. Okay, so uh, no, that's the percentage. Which one had the numbers? Let's go back to the add the elements, data labels. Chart title was there, legend. More options, that shows where it is. Well, I'm lost for, maybe it's under the select data. No, that doesn't seem to be right to, well, we're gonna have to figure that one out another time. Or unless one of you can remind me how to get the actual data in while I'm doing it here. Chart title we want, data labels we want, legend we want, let's see. Yeah, that doesn't, that seems to not be the label options, category name, value, maybe that's it. Well, I'm getting lost in the weeds here. But in any case, what I did want to show you was the other thing is you see, all of these labels are a little bit too crowded. So you can actually drag them around. And that may be something you want to show your, your students. And you see this one here, it automatically included a line. If you get too far away. So in any case, that's a, a repeat. Hopefully uh, it was sufficient to, to get you started. Uh, and then to get it into the, the PowerPoint, you could leave it like this, but to get it into the PowerPoint, you just click on the whole table, it selects it, and then you can copy it and paste it into the into the PowerPoint. You could copy and paste it into a Word document. You could copy and paste it into a discussion on the LMS. Uh, you know, you could, there are many, many ways for the students to get this data uh, to you. Um, and then also, One of the nice things about it, it's very dynamic. So if they change it here, it gets changed here as well, which is pretty cool. Cause if they, you know, if they find a mistake, for example, if they paste this into the PowerPoint or into your LMS, and as the teacher, you notice the mistake, as long as they haven't gotten rid of their original file, if they've saved the file, it's not that difficult for them to go back to the original and uh, do spelling corrections. Um, but again, you know, this is a, the type of activity that not just for ESL, but uh, you know, perhaps students in academic classes uh, may uh, find this type of uh, you know, ability to work with Excel, uh, a good introduction to using Excel. So uh, I think that's enough for this particular project. I would like to move on uh, to the last project unless there are any further questions. Let's get rid of that and we'll minimize that. Okay, I don't see any questions popping up. I think we're okay. All right, so that's called the Daily Activities Project, which is a nice introduction to uh, using uh, Excel and builds uh, on the PowerPoints. Uh, the final project that I wanna talk about today is, is an actual research project. Um, and uh, this, uh, you know, is, this wouldn't be the first project you try. 
uh, with your students. Uh, but after they've done multiple projects, after they've done multiple PowerPoints, after they've worked, you know, they've done Excel, uh, this is a great uh, culmination project for a semester um, because it involves uh, quite a, a, a bit of things. So it requires or it involves having students actually uh, design a research project where they actually have to collect data uh, from uh, other members uh, of the class. Um, when I used to do this, um, I always tried to make sure uh, that the data was something that they actually had to initiate a conversation about. So for example, uh, you know, finding out what color uh, people, uh, you know, uh, pants were, you know, was not really uh, suitable in the classroom because in the classroom you could just look at what color people's pants were. Okay, so they had to, first they had to vet their, or they had to submit their project ideas to me uh, and then I would okay them. So uh, it had to involve some sort of uh, conversation. Now, of course, in an online environment where maybe they're collecting the data by, uh, you know, texting or emailing or in a discussion group, uh, then, you know, language is, is likely involved. But let me go ahead and uh, show uh, some actual student uh, projects. Okay, so uh, this was ESL Intermediate Low. Um, notice actually this was a, I used to do this with other teachers. Uh, and the reason we did that was um, some of the students were intermediate low and then the other class was a different level. So it, it really was a nice, uh, you know, uh, effort in cooperation between students of different levels. So this is the research project. And I'm just clicking through the slides here. And then uh, I said, do you have any questions? So let me talk a little bit about that. Uh, we would actually bring the, all of the students into one classroom. And then the, uh, the students giving the presentation would ask this of the, of the whole class and then um, get some responses and they'd have to respond to the questions. Uh, and then the final slide of your PowerPoint was uh, always a thank you. Let me just show another one real quickly so you can get some ideas here. And um, all of this stuff with the backgrounds and the letter, the types of letters, that is not teacher generated. This is all students, you know, going crazy. Okay, and, and you can see they, they found out how to choose different table types and, you know, work with different uh, variations, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of that they did on their own. Let's take a look at another one. Oops, sorry. Uh, and then you know, this one, I, I selected this one as a sample because they actually, you know, were looking at multiple ways to display the, uh, you know, multiple data sets, not just at one restaurant, but at three different restaurants. Uh, and then, of course, these were restaurants where they actually worked at. So, you know, it's a really great topic because they're doing research about something that, you know, has meaning to them. And then uh, we've got one more that I want to show you. And I wanted to bring up this one because, um, you know, students are uh, very, very creative and uh, you can actually manipulate uh, when you make the chart. Uh, they don't have to be just boring old colors. You can actually uh, insert photos. And so this is a really nice example of that where uh, the student um, represented each column with the actual, uh, an actual photo of, of, the, of the type of cake. I thought that was pretty cool. And then finally, let me go back. 
you see, this is just a, a, an example of the, what it might look like in the classroom. So uh, the student uh, standing is speaking. The student at the laptop is her partner in this particular project and uh, is controlling uh, the slides. Um, and then this is a really, really great project for introducing students to the idea of uh, speaking uh, in front of a group, giving a presentation uh, at, and believe me, in, at uh, ESL levels, um, this is frightening for students. Um, it's, they get, they were all used to confess how nervous they were and how much they would practice. Uh, but it's a good idea to, you know, let them in on uh, some teacher techniques, you know, where do you stand? Uh, do you face the screen the entire time? Do you, you know, do you face the students the entire time? Uh, you know, I used to give them a, uh, a laser pointer so that they could, uh, you know, really practice giving a presentation. Uh, and then interestingly enough, uh, what would happen though, uh, when I first started doing it with my lowest level students, um, I did find that they were able to uh, create the presentation, do the research, create the presentations and ask, uh, and ask for questions. But I found that at the lowest levels, okay, um, they had a really difficult time asking questions about what they just saw. And that was when it occurred to me, uh, maybe I can bring in other classes, uh, higher level classes to be the audience. And so that was another reason for pairing up uh, classes. And sometimes I wouldn't pair up a class to do the research. My students, I would just bring in the other class to be the audience because um, level two students, beginning level students, they could create the presentation, they could answer questions, but you know, formulating a question about what they saw uh, was a little bit too difficult. So I would bring in level five and level six classes um, to be the audience. And believe me, again, you know, it was, it was one level of anxiety when students learned that they were going to present to their own class. It was an entirely different level of anxiety when they learned that they would be uh, presenting to a visiting class. So again, this was a wonderful end of the year project. Uh, and, um, you know, I think students really uh, got a lot of value um, out of it. Let me uh, go now to um, looking at some uh, actual student created charts uh, for this same project. And, and we'll just, we have a, a little bit of time. Uh, we can see, um, you know, how, how this project would, would work out. So this is just a, I just copied a bunch of uh, student presentations into a, a slideshow, just so you can see the types of um, research that was taking place, uh, you know, by students. Isn't that, isn't that a great research project? How many M&Ms of each color? Okay, and what I like about this one is that again, you know, the students do research about things that have meaning to them. So these, this was the average monthly production of women's clothing by size at the factory where she worked. And so she, you know, went, she had that data available to her anyway. Uh, that's just a few examples. So many different types of things. Okay, so let's go to uh, an actual, uh, this is the actual worksheet. Uh, again, the, you know, if they've done the daily activities project already, they're already familiar with the basic concept. If they haven't, it's not that difficult to, um, you know, to introduce to your students. Uh, you're, again, you're just looking at two columns. So in this case, favorite car company. So column A has a bunch of different cars. And then 
uh, column B has, you know, how many students said Honda was their favorite car, how many students said Toyota was their favorite car. So that's all the same. Uh, again, all you're doing is highlighting the two columns, okay, is selecting insert, and then picking the chart. So in this case, instead of a pie chart, a bar graph or a bar chart, column chart uh, was really the best option. Okay, but what I wanted to show you, the thing that's new was, you know, ch changing the um, color of the columns into not just a color, but maybe different colors or uh, a photo. So I can do that with this one. Um, the way it works, uh, you know, again, remember, you can just click on the whole chart and make it a little bit larger so it's easier to work with. Okay, um, and then you just select the columns. The first time you click on a single column, all of the columns are highlighted. Okay, and so then uh, you could, you know, right click, you know, and, you know, you pick a, a different color, but notice the entire uh, series changes. Okay. All right, so that provides a little bit of variety. The second time you click on a column, notice only that column has changed. So then you can just change the color of that column. So that's where, like, for example, if they're doing, you know, favorite colors, they can just change each column uh, to a different color. And, and, and these are fairly uh, simple uh, techniques that the students picked up uh, pretty easily. Okay. But then let's say you do want to, you know, use the photo idea. So obviously you're not going to change all of the photos at once. So you, again, you click twice. The first time it selects the entire series. Uh, the second time it selects just the one column. And this time when you right click and you select format the data point, meaning the column, okay, you get, you know, the typical types of options. So we're going to select fill. And you also have some other options, all different types of things, you know, different patterns. See, you can change it uh, to different patterns, uh, gradients. See how it's, it's sort of like a gradient now. Uh, but this one here says picture or texture. Okay, and so you're, you're given the option of inserting a picture from file, a clipboard or online. So I did go ahead and I, I prepared for this particular uh, workshop by finding a picture of, for Honda. Okay, and so I'm gonna select file and go to my folder and see, and there's a picture of a, a Honda. Okay, so I'm gonna insert it, see? Do the same thing for Toyota, a picture. Okay, and then we'll find the Toyota picture. See? And then for Ford, I just did a few, I didn't do all of them, but I did find a picture of a, a very classic Ford. Okay. Um, and so uh, you get that, but then of course, what happens is you, you get a little bit of, um, distortion and things like that. So uh, one of the things that there's some other um, things that you can work with. Now, so what did I did then was I clicked off of it and I clicked back on because now again, the whole series, each column is highlighted, but you get a little new, you get a new menu option. Okay, and this says uh, gap with. So the gap is the space between the pictures. So if I make the gap wider, then that means the picture will be smaller, but I can make the gap smaller. Watch what happens. So that actually works better for these 
columns because there's a little bit more height than for the Ford. But I think let's go back up a little bit. Maybe we'll, we'll find a nice happy medium. And, and now it's a little bit more distinguishable. Or you, you can actually make it no gap. And that works too. Actually, the Ford picture isn't so bad. So I'm going to leave it at that. But again, uh, you know, you can click on a single one, choose fill, picture. Okay, this time, uh, did I do the wrong one? I, I don't know if that's, that, that, that looks like the same photo. So what we want to do is we want to go, maybe we'll go online this time. And let's search for Nissan and see if we can find a good picture from Nissan. Okay, so uh, we want to get there. That one has the, we want to get that nice logo, the Nissan logo. There we go. That looks good. And we'll say Nissan. So there you go. And that's very easy. And students really get the hang of that uh, very, very quickly. So uh, that is actually the last project uh, that I'll be uh, talking about. So let me just go back to my original slide show. And yeah, that's it. That was the last one. So um, let's take some time. And uh, do you have any questions specifically uh, about this project or maybe this new wrinkle of inserting the photos into the uh, Excel charts? Um, anything that you want to bring up? And the crowd goes still. Yeah. <laughs> they're all playing, I bet you. I hope, I hope so. I hope they're trying this out. Yeah. Because it again, you know, it's not the type of project you want to do at the beginning of the semester. But um, you know, if you've been working with your students uh, for a few months and they're getting familiar with using uh, some of these uh, you know tools uh, to practice language. Uh, remember, if it's an ESL class or other type of class, the language is the important part. Uh, this is the vehicle for getting them to stand up in front of the class and speak or getting them to talk to your student, to other students in the class. And it doesn't have to be students. It could be people at their work or it could be their friends. But it's a, it's a chance to, you know, get them to speak and to communicate using the language. And we're sort of tricking them, you know, by making them do a project. Uh, you know, that's one of the things about project based learning is they forget they're learning a language uh, and they're actually just doing something. Jerry, we have a question in the Q&A. Okay. Are you doing this now with long distance school? Are you doing these projects? Um, I cannot say that I personally am. Uh, because my position now is out of the classroom and I work more with teachers getting them uh, to do these types of things uh, in general. Um, you know, I would say these last six months, I I'm still getting, you know, teachers to use our uh, learning management system, you know, how do they even put materials in the learning management system. Some of our teachers could probably uh, do this and run with it and I do introduce some of these ideas uh you know along the way but i i don't actually get a chance to do these things with my own students uh now for for quite some time that's why some of some of the dates on the projects are a little bit old but um i'm highly confident that seeing what other teachers are doing uh with their students that these are still very very doable um in our division you know, we have CTE teachers who are really uh, going very, very strongly with having their students complete projects uh, and turning the projects in uh, with photos, with videos. Uh, and so I, I'm fairly confident that, um, you know, these types of projects are very, very workable. Uh, just as an example of that are, I know for a fact, and I've seen some really nice examples, um, the cosmetology uh, one of the cosmetology teachers, uh, you know, has uh, students 
um, take photos of each step in the process of, for example, you know, uh, preparing somebody's nails. And so that that's the way they demonstrate in the online environment that they they've learned the competency. So they're uh, taking photos, they're uh, using PowerPoint, uh, and they're dropping the photos into the uh, PowerPoint slides, and um, you know, explaining each step of a process in order for them to you know move on to the next competency. So I do know that it works. I can't say that I've you know done it with my own students yet. Okay, also, well, I think we're doing really good on time. We are. Um, There's one last oh, question sure. here, um, Barry. And uh, this could be, I guess, in relation or related to distance learning or in the classroom. Uh, how do you aid students in minimizing their anxiety about presenting in front of others? Ah, uh, okay. Well, you know, I, I guess the the first part was I would also give them time to practice. So if the if it was in the face to face classroom, you know, they we could give before they did their like official presentation, like with uh, the other class, you know, I, I would give them time permitting, uh, you know, and a, the possibility of doing it um, just with the members of their class or, or even in small groups. Um, and then also there's always roles. So for example, maybe, you know, like in that one picture I showed you, you know, uh, you know, she was more comfortable with standing in front of the class and presenting, and he was more comfortable with, you know, working on the computer. And so, and that was acceptable because it was a team project. Okay. okay. I think, is, do we agree that's about it? I think uh, it is. Okay, so before I turn it over to um, Melinda for the wrapping up, I want my last slide. I just want to review the um, objectives uh, that I posited at the beginning. Uh, hopefully, uh, what happened was that now uh, you are able to um, have your students uh, work on or present uh, several separate projects using Microsoft PowerPoint and Excel. And by doing so doing, they'll be able to, you know, practice or demonstrate vocabulary, grammar, or the content that you're covering in class. So that was the goal. Uh, I hope that uh, I met uh, those objectives. Uh, I want to thank uh, you for uh, being here today.